Hi, teachers. The transition to the new NGSS aligned adoption has brought a unique opportunity to change the dialogue around science instruction. For many of us, it has been a welcome opportunity. Others have found it a bit of a challenge. Today, I would like to demystify some of the pieces of the adoption and discuss the alignment to the concepts of the California Next Generation Science Standards. So during today's session, we will look at the organization of the Inspire Science program. We'll look at the components of each level of the curriculum, and we'll take a deep dive into the lesson progression. In order to really get a grasp on the curriculum, we need to understand some specific components of the NGSS. The NGSS are based on the constructivist approach to learning. Some of the key components that they that they used in developing the standards are that all children are naturally curious. To learn, humans develop conceptual frameworks. The development of conceptual frameworks relies on prior knowledge, strongly held beliefs about how the world works or preconceived ideas, new learning that challenges strongly held beliefs and a structure for making sense of the new learning. This means that students develop concepts slowly over time with repeated experiences. The NGSS were developed with these constructs in mind. Therefore, every standard or performance expectation is written as a goal that reflects what students should know and be able to do. Each performance expectation contains a disciplinary core idea, what the students will know, a science and engineering practice, what the students will do, and a cross-cutting concept, the lens through which students will analyze the phenomenon. The Inspire Science program is written to address these facets of the NGSS. Let's take a look at the curriculum organization. Inspire Science program is broken into units. Each unit is broken into a number of modules and each module is broken up into a number of lessons. Let's take a look at the components for the units, modules, and lessons. <clears throat> Every grade level has four units presented. The units may be taught in any order. It's designed to construct learning around phenomena. The students will build understanding of specific scientific concepts by exploring phenomena and the unit is built to be taught in order. So that means you're not gonna take the pieces of the unit and rearrange them because they're designed for the progression of learning and repeated experiences around similar concepts. They're designed with an engineering culminating activity known as the STEM activity and learning and vocabulary are not front loaded. They're intentionally not front loaded in the program. It's meant to be discovered and experienced and then connected to the experiences that they have. Modules make up the units. There are an average of two to three modules per unit. The modules are not designed to be standalone components, nor are they to be taught out of sequence. Each module is designed around a module phenomenon. Students explore the module phenomenon to understand elements of the specific scientific concepts. These elements are then applied to understand the module phenomenon, answer an essential question, and develop scientific concepts. <clears throat> Finally, students combine the module learnings to address the NGSS standards. So as the students are progressing through the modules of a unit, they are building smaller components that then they combine together and connect to answer questions about the phenomenon. <clears throat> Each module is broken down into approximately two to four lessons. The lessons are not designed to be standalone, like we just pull one lesson out and we pull another lesson from another module or another unit. They're designed to be taught in sequence. The lessons may be designed to be taught for multiple days in sequence. <clears throat> so one lesson is going to take multiple days to complete because it, it addresses all five components of the 5E model. So each lesson 
we'll have an engage phase, an explore phase. Often explore and explain are either combined into one phase or they are, you go back and forth between exploring and explaining so that the students can get a better understanding of the information that they have learned during their explore phase. After explaining, the students move on to elaborate where they're going to take the information that they've been learning and apply it to a new situation. And then there is an evaluation period during which both the students and the teacher will be evaluating the learning that has happened throughout the lesson. So this sequence is designed to help students build and develop layers of understanding around a common concept. So let's take a deeper look at these lessons. <clears throat> Each lesson contains an engage phase, an explore phase, an explain phase, an elaborate phase, and an evaluate phase. The engage phase is designed to introduce the lesson phenomenon. It establishes and defines the essential question for the learning, and it's set to explore prior learning and preconceived ideas. At the end of the engage phase, students actually generate questions to better understand the phenomenon and questions to help them break down the essential question into smaller questions that they can answer over a period of time. You'll notice here in the corner, the engage phase is student-centered. The teacher's role in this engage phase is really to be a facilitator of discussion and helping the students organize the thinking around the essential question, not to answer anything at this point in time, just collect the student's information and help facilitate their discussions around it. At the end of the engage phase, students will have engaged with the phenomenon, generated connections to the phenomenon, both personal connections and some connections from common experiences. They will have developed an understanding of the essential question. They're not gonna answer the, the science concepts. They're not gonna answer the essential question. They just understand what that question is asking. And finally, they will have generated questions about the module, the lesson, the phenomenon that they're interested in exploring. Sometimes they're going to generate questions that aren't going to be answered by, that, by this lesson or this module. And that's great that they have those questions. You get to decide how you're going to address those questions that are not yet answered. You can have them, there are lots of great ideas have been thrown around, a uh, wonder wall, um, extra credit work, generating questions that can be used for a later assignment, lots of ways to use those questions. Don't just let them fall by the wayside. You'll notice again, I've illustrated here that this is student-centered thinking. The teacher is the role of facilitator during the engage portion of the lesson. The next portion of the lesson is the explore portion. This portion of the lesson is designed to allow students to explore the phenomenon and the science concepts. It's going to provide common experiences for the students around the phenomenon and it's going to provide common experiences for the students to gather information and data. The students are going to develop a dialogue <clears throat> with the teacher around the phenomenon and common vocabulary is going to start to be introduced at this stage. Now, the key about the vocabulary development in NGSS is that the students have they have to have an experience to hang the vocabulary on. So what we're looking for in this explore phase before we introduce concept vocabulary is that the students are describing in their, in their language, in kid-friendly language, the experiences they're having. And once they have a solid explanation, a solid description of the experience, then we're going to give them the specific vocabulary words that will connect to that learning that they already have. So you'll see here down here in the vocabulary development section, when we're in the explore phase, we're in this part where they're experiencing and describing their thinking. So I'm going to have an experience and I'm going to use my words to describe that experience. Once the students get to this point where they're able to start describe the, describing the experience, you'll go ahead and introduce those vocabulary terms to them. Just like, hey, did you know you are describing this concept, this vocabulary term. 
And that's what that means. You've discovered it. We want that sense of discovery to be happening during this explore phase. So you'll see explore is also very student centered. Teacher, your role is going to be that guide on the side. You're that knowledgeable other providing the information in a timely fashion, right when the students need it, you can come in and provide that vocabulary. Right when the students need it, you can come in and provide that question that's going to push them to the next step. So what can you expect at the end of the explore phase? By the end of the explore phase, students will have some common experiences around the phenomenon. So they'll be able to have good discussion about the common experiences that they've had. They're going to be able to explain in kid language what they've experienced. And they're going to begin to use some of those content vocabulary words. Now, they may not use them perfectly or they may not have a complete understanding of those words yet, but you should start hearing it in the conversations that they're having. You should hear those vocabulary terms start finding their way into those conversations that are happening. And then also students will have collected some evidence based on those questions that they asked in the engage phase. So they're going to have some evidence to support that answer that's developing about the essential question or an answer to the essential question. That's when we move into the explain phase. And this is probably the phase that most of us teachers are super comfortable in. It's the part where, where we get to be that directed teacher. We get to provide the lessons. We get to provide the information. But we have to also be careful in this part because the information that we're sharing in this part, the things that we want them to learn are the pieces of information that they can connect to answer the essential question. So it's not, we're not teaching them the answer to that question. We want them to come to that answer on their own. That's the thinking, that's the development of the understanding. But what we wanna do is we wanna provide them pieces of information that will help them make connections to the science concepts. And then the students in this part are going to be making those connections and writing about it. This is where the CER comes in. So by the end of the explain phase, what will happen is that students will produce a written CER response to the essential question. We wanna see them using the science vocabulary in this explanation, and we wanna see them using evidence from their experiences to support the answer that they make. So a CER starts with a claim. A claim is a one sentence answer to a question. So we just wanna know what is the answer to the question that was asked at the beginning of this lesson. Then the students will provide evidence. So evidence are just pieces of data that they have collected from activities or experiences that they've had. The data may be observational or the data may be numerical. And we want them to be listing this evidence in sentences. So I, I got this data from this place, and it means that this is the result. The R in CER is for reasoning. When we're talking about reasoning in a CER, we are looking for the vocabulary. We're looking for the definition of Newton's laws. We're looking for the definition of gravity. We're talking about the definition of cell theory. These are the definitions that we want the students to connect their experience to. So essentially what we're doing is we're having them answer the question and we're saying, I know this is the answer to the question because this is what I saw happening. This is the evidence that I gathered. And by gathering this evidence, I can see the connection to this scientific thinking. And we're gonna look at that specific scientific thinking that we want them to learn about. And so that's what the CER is going to help the students do. It's gonna help them develop this train of thought. Here's my answer. Here's the experience that I had and the evidence that I gathered from that experience. And this is the reason that all of this is happening is because this is this discovery that was made in science. And this is the definition of what I have learned. Okay. So you'll see that the explain phase definitely is teacher directed. And the students are producing the writing. This is where they really get in and produce their answers. The explain phase is designed to bring all of the students learning together. They're gonna to connect the science concepts to their experiences. 
They're going to define scientific vocabulary. So here is a great opportunity for those vocabulary experiences. We've had experiences around the concept. Now let's bring the words so that we can define that concept better. And then finally, it's the opportunity to provide students uh, the opportunity to explain their thinking about the phenomenon while using their scientific vocabulary. So we're going to revisit this vocabulary development in NGSS. In the early stages of ex engage and explore, we had experiences and we described our experiences. But we're moving deeper now and we're ready to define those experiences by the concepts that we're learning. And we're ready to take those concepts and connect them to the phenomenon that we're trying to understand. And that's how vocabulary works. That's how the con concepts work. This is how we're building our ideas in Inspire Science. After the students have had the opportunity to build their thinking around this, they're going to take all of this learning and apply it to a new situation. And that's what the Elaborate phase is for. So Elaborate is designed to provide opportunities for students to apply the new learning to a different phenomenon. They're going to introduce related concepts to the science concepts. They're going to encourage students in this, in this section, uh, students will be encouraged to think about how the science concept relates to other facets of their own lives. So they might be going out and gathering information from their own lives that is explained by this uh, science concept. And it also is the opportunity to introduce careers and the scientific field related to the learning that they've been doing in this lesson so far. Um, elaborate is probably the one area in Inspire Science where you could find a piece, a phenomenon to help the students link their thinking to because it's oftentimes a very short part of the, the lesson and it's, um, it's usually a reading. But if you want to elaborate with the students and have them look at a different phenomenon during this time and bring in some of the other lessons that you've done around this, the science concept, this would be a great time to do it. Again, I want to point out that the elaborate section is student-centered. This is where the students are applying their thinking. So they've learned this thing, they've explained this thing, and now they're going to apply it to figuring out something new. So the teacher role shifts back to that guide on the side. So you're going to be the guide on the side, encouraging the students, um, asking the right questions, providing that on the moment, just in time guidance for them to move their thinking to the next step. That's what you're moving back to in that guide on the side role. So what can you expect at the end of an elaborate phase? Um, students will participate in an activity in which they're gonna apply their new learning. They're gonna make connections between lesson experiences, module phenomena and unit phenomena. They might connect to a job in the field or, or a career in the field that they are studying. And this is where the students are going to really be applying the vocabulary that was introduced in the earlier lessons. So in the earlier part of the lesson. So really, this is where we want to hear the students producing that vocabulary, we want to read that vocabulary and the writing that they're doing. This is where it's getting reinforced in the work that they're doing. So this is where we would really encourage the use of that vocabulary. And then finally, we move into the evaluate stage. So teacher direction and student reflection are kind of on equal footing for this part. The evaluate phase is designed to prompt students to reflect on the learning that they've been doing. It's to prompt them to connect to bigger science concepts. So we're going to take what we learned in this lesson and connect it to the other lessons that we've learned, connect it to the big concepts of the unit. Um, it really is that opportunity for students to reflect on all the pieces that they have been um, gathering all the evidence that they've been gathering, all the information they've been gathering, all the learning they've been doing, and reflect on how much they've grown. It's also the point where you're going to revisit those um, probes, the Paige Keeley probes or the probes from the beginning of the lesson. Those are meant to kind of look at our preconceived ideas. And then at the end, when we reevaluate those, 
we're going to see if we still have those same ideas or if there's something throughout the learning that has challenged our thinking and helped us to grow. And so that's really where we take in that student reflection and learning. So while the students are going through that process, the teacher is going to be um, providing students the opportunity for summative assessment. This is where you're gonna take that last evaluation of the learning that was done for the lesson and see what the students really have taken away with it in content knowledge areas. So what should we expect at the end of the evaluate phase? So students will complete a prompt. They're going to complete their final CER and turn that in. The thinking um, in this prompt, in the response to this prompt, should be around the concepts that were learned throughout the lesson. It should answer the essential question that was asked at the beginning of the lesson. They should be including evidence from the experiences that they had throughout the lesson. So we should see uh, evidence from the experiences they've had. We should see evidences from the data that they've collected. We should see evidence from some of the reading that they've done. They might have some examples in there that they have pulled um, information from. And we should definitely absolutely see the vocabulary being used in this final portion of the lesson. So um, essentially that is the gist of how the lessons are put together in Inspire. It's why we ask that you do it in a specific order and in a specific way so that the students can get the most out of the experience that they're having. Um, I hope that by going through this, you'll be able to pull out what are the most important pieces for helping the students experience this process in a digital environment, as well as in your classrooms when we get to see each other face to face again. Thanks for watching another episode of the Curriculum Cafe. If you like what you saw, click like and subscribe.